المكتب التعاوني للدعوة والإرشاد وتوعية الجاليات بخميس شيب الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته When the Prophet, peace be upon him, was leaving Mecca against his own will, he looked at Mecca and said, By Allah, hadn't it for your people who have driven me out of you, I will never leave you. Dear viewers, welcome to a new episode of History Makers. Our history maker of today is Suraqa ibn Malik. Another one of those people around the Prophet who have made history. Those people who have really contributed to the progression of Islam, to the propagation of this deen, to reach distances that no other religion has reached. A question that's raised now, why did the people of Mecca forced the Prophet to leave his homeland, a place that he loved more than any other place. Was he dishonest? They used to call him the truthful. Did he commit a crime? No, not at all. Then why? They gave one good reason to them as polytheists, people who disbelieve in Allah that he was ridiculing their idols. He was inviting people to a new way of life that they have not experienced, that was different from their ancestors. That was the major reason. But let's, kind of, let's, ask, let's ask another question, which is as pressing as the previous one. Why did the Prophet, peace be upon him, give permission to his companions to migrate first to Abyssinia, then later to Medina. He himself was left in Mecca with two other people that they were very close to him, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq and Ali ibn Abi Talib the leader of the older generation and the leader of the younger generation. The first among the older people to accept the Prophet and the first among the young generation to accept the Prophet. It is a very interesting selection by Allah. Historians refer that to a number of reasons. One, that Allah, the Prophet, was the leader of his community, Muslim community at that time. He had the right to give them permission to leave Mecca to Medina to seek refuge in Medina, to find support in Medina. But he himself cannot make the decision for himself. As Allah mentioned in the Quran, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٍ يُوحَىٰ He does not speak out of himself. It is revelation. So he was waiting for his Lord's permission to go any direction. So this is one reason. Another reason that he stayed back in Mecca to receive all dangers and save his companions. So they will have a safe passage to find a haven in which they will be protected, a place in which they can really practice their own belief. He actually played the role of a noble captain of a wrecked ship who insisted not to leave the ship until all the passengers go to safety, to land. But what happened? When the Qurayshi realized, the Qurayshi refills, refers to the people of Mecca, of Quraysh, the Meccans people, that most of his companions have left already and they could not do anything to stop the progression of Islam. The industrious work of this man 
They know he's truthful. But his truthfulness will negate many principles that they believed in, will deprive them of many rights that they've been holding. He's equating the slave with the master, the black with the white, the Arab with the non-Arab, something that they have not heard of. They look at themselves as superior than anybody else. But Islam is not a religion for the Arabs or the, for, the, for the Qurayshis. It is for the whole universe. So they made a plot. They plotted a crime. Had it taken place, it would have been the most dangerous, evil crime in history. But Allah is protecting his prophet. The Quraysh decided to kill him, to exterminate the prophet. They thought if they would kill the prophet, that would be the end of everything that he's been preaching. But what, how would they respond to his tribe when they ask for revenge? Who could do that step? As you know, tribal linkage relationship among the Arabs is very strong. And they expected Banu Hashim, the tribe of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to go and ask for his revenge. What did they do? They looked round and made a scheme that they selected 12 young people, very strong knights. Among the 12, from among the 12 tribes of Quraysh. And they said, what you do, as this man gets out of his house, you hit him as if it's, it was one person with the swords. So his blood will depress, will spread among the different tribes. And Banu Hashim, his immediate tribe, will find it difficult to fight all these tribes. So they sent 12 people, young people, strong people, having their swords in hand, lining in front of the door of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu But revelation came to him. Allah informed him that, O oh Muhammad, they want to assassinate you. But don't be afraid. I am with you. So the Prophet made the arrangement with Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an, to go along with him and leave, migrate to Medina. So he woke up tonight, left Ali ibn Abi Talib to sleep in his bed, passed in between those people, but they could not see him. وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدًّا وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ سَدًّا فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يَبْصِرُونَ They could not see him. Allah made a dam in between their hands and behind them. They cannot see the Prophet, peace be upon him, when he passed through them. He went on his way and he followed the plan. He took all human kind of planning in consideration, although he was supported by Allah. He tricked Quraysh's. Medina is in the north. And he should have moved to the north. Instead, he moved to the south. And stayed in a cave there for three days. But what is the role of Suraq Abu Malik, our hero for tonight? The Quraysh's looked around. They got astonished. How could he escape 12 people standing at his doorsteps? There must be something extraordinary. But they announced a prize of 100 camels for anybody who will bring him back. That was a great chance for the best tracker of Quraysh, Suraqa ibn Malik. He took his horse and they realized that he'll be going to Medina, no other way. They tracked, found out that he's not going to Medina, but Suraqa ibn Malik realized that he's going to Medina. There is no other way but Medina. He followed his tracks. He reached the prophets. It was Abu Bakr looking around when he saw Suraqa. 
but the prophet has his full confidence in his Lord. He looked at Suraka, but Suraka could not reach him. Do you know why? For a simple reason. His horse's legs sank in the sand, could not move, and he had to plea for help from the prophet, peace be upon him. And the prophet prayed for him. His horse was released. So he continued tra tra tracking the prophet, peace be upon him. And the prophet looked at him and said, Suraka, you cannot catch us. And his horse's legs sank in the sand again. And Suraka has, had to plead to the prophet. The prophet said to him, Suraka, you cannot catch us. But go to the people of Mecca and distract them. He said, for what? As if he were saying to the prophet, they were promising me 100 camels to bring you back to them. Now he said, tell me to go. He said, Suraka, you will wear the bracelets of Kisra, Suraka. And Kisra was the most powerful man on earth at that time. He was the emperor of Persia. How come a person who escaped in death is promising the bracelets of the most powerful man on earth at that time? So Suraka did not understand that, but he had to accept that. He says, he cannot catch him. The prophet went to Medina. And he was really received in a very different way. He was received with love, with respect. People have been waiting for him. Every day they will go and wait until the evening and look around in the horizon when the prophet will appear. But there were no flags. There were no cars. There were no, no clapping. There were no caps. Very simple. Humble, very powerful. That was the reception of the people of Medina when they received, received Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Suraq ibn Malik went back to the people of Mecca and told them, forget about it. He's gone. And he was truthful. Nobody would be able to catch him since he is protected by Allah. But Suraq ibn Malik, 10 years later, went to Medina migrating as well. He met with the companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He met the Prophet and he was always looking at the eyes of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as if he were saying to him, where is your promise, O Prophet of Allah? You prophesied something 10 years ago. I still remember. I haven't got my prize yet. I missed one for the Quraysh's when I was a polytheist. Now I'm a Muslim. I believe in you. I think you told me the truth. And that the time for that truth, for that prophecy, has not come yet. The Prophet ﷺ died. And Suraka stayed alive. It was the time of the first caliph, the first successor of the Prophet, peace be upon him, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. The Muslims went north, east, west, south, spreading, spreading the religion of Allah, the truth that they believed in. To liberate people, to change their situation, to replace injustice with justice. Suraka was thinking as he was really going with them about the promise, the promise that the Prophet has, had given him a long time ago and it hadn't been fulfilled yet. One day, during the time of Umar, Ibn al-Khattab when the Muslims or the Muslim army took its way into Persia. And the Persian Empire was demolished forever. The ornaments of Kisra were brought to Medina. Suraka didn't go there. They were brought to Medina. And Suraka, at that time, was having that question in mind. When the caravan reached Medina and the ornaments were brought 
to the Muslim commander-in-chief, Caliph Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu an. He looked at these jewels, very precious ones. He did not believe that those poor people would bring them back without stealing them, without even touching them. And he said to one of them, you must be very honest. They responded to him, because you are honest yourself. Your people are just following you as an example. They learn from your honesty, because Umar himself was not taking anything from it as well, although he had all the power to do whatever he want. Look, what did Umar do? And they said to him, these are the ornaments of Kisra. These are the most precious bracelets of Kisra that Kisra used to wear. He said, where is Suraqa? Where is Suraqa? They were looking around for Suraqa. Did they find Suraqa? Yes. Suraqa was there. And he came to the mosque. And he said, now I can ask that question. Where are Kisra's bracelets? They gave him Kisra's bracelets. And he wore them for a minute. And the response of the companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu even those people who were in the mosque who have not seen the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The prophecy of the truthful, the prophecy of the honest, the prophecy of the great messenger of Allah has been fulfilled. Suraqa at that time was able to realize the truthfulness of the Prophet وسلم, that he has never had any doubt about. Inshallah, we'll see you in another episode with another great history maker. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.